In the next few minutes, we're going to go over some specific technical acts with respect to copyrighted works and explain their jurisdictional implications. Later on, we will take these basic principles and apply them to some common scenarios you might encounter in text data mining research. Reproduction. Reproduction is one of the core exclusive rights of the copyright owner. It's safe to assume that any reproduction made across a communications network can be thought of as taking place at either end. Thus, electronically transferring a file from country A to country B may well infringe the reproduction right at the source and at the destination. Making available. In jurisdictions that recognize a, quote, making available to the public right as part of copyright, simply making work accessible online constitutes infringement even if no one actually takes advantage of that accessibility. There is no making available right in the US. There's actually some disagreement here, but we are 99.9% .9 sure. However, this right is fairly common overseas. If a copyrighted work is hosted on a server in country A and is accessible in country B, it has been made available in country B and could infringe the making available right in country B. So, for example, if a work is hosted on a server in the United States and made available to users in Algeria, Greece, Germany, and I'm pretty sure that's the flag of Azerbaijan. Anyway, if it's available in those countries, if there is an infringement of the making available right, the infringement happens where the work is made available. In this case, Germany, Greece, Albania, and Azerbaijan. Distribution. Technically, a digital download of a copyrighted work is both a reproduction and a distribution. However, the distribution right is essentially redundant in the online context because the reproduction right can do all the heavy lifting. The distribution right is also potentially triggered by simply transferring possession of a physical copy of the work from one person to the next. In general, the distribution right is infringed in the place where the work is received. So in this example, if we have a copy sent from the United States via the trusty US Postal Service to individuals in Korea, Canada, Norway, Spain, and Israel, if there is infringement of the distribution right, it would happen in those countries of receipt. The distribution right sounds incredibly broad, but the distribution right is actually limited by the first sale doctrine. Other countries call this the doctrine of exhaustion. Once the copyright owner has sold or given away a particular copy of the work, she no longer has any right to control any subsequent distribution of that particular copy. She still has the right to control copying, but the copy she just sold should be free from any post-sale restrictions. In some countries, the principle of exhaustion only applies to a sale within that country. The United States takes a much broader view. Under US law, the copyright owner's rights are exhausted by the first sale, no matter where that sale takes place. The European Union takes a regional approach to exhaustion. So a physical book sold in Paris can be resold in Berlin without further authorization, but a book sold in Pittsburgh can't be. In the United States, the right to import and export copies of works is treated as a subset of the distribution right. Importing a work into or exporting a work from the United States infringes the distribution right if it is done without the authority of the copyright owner under US law and the making of the relevant copies either constituted an infringement of copyright under US law or would have constituted an infringement of copyright law if US law had applied. It's worth emphasizing that US, not foreign law, is the benchmark here. And so the legality of importing and exporting copies of works into or from the United States is judged by US legal standards, including, most importantly for our purposes, the fair use doctrine. Public performance and display. Even in the absence of a reproduction, copyright can be infringed 
by transmitting the work as a public performance or a public display. In the EU and many other jurisdictions, this would be a communication to the public. Streaming video and broadcast radio are both examples of public performance or communication through transmission. For the purpose of thinking about cross-border issues, it seems safe to assume that a work is performed or communicated either in the place where the transmission was initiated or in the place where it was received. However, only the person making the transmission violates the performance right. So if a work is streamed from country A to an audience in country B, the person making the transmission may be liable in both jurisdictions, but the person receiving the transmission wouldn't be liable in either. The use of data derived from copyrighted works. The distinction between protectable original expression and unprotectable facts and ideas is one of the universal building blocks of copyright law. The non-expressive metadata that results from text data mining research doesn't, in and of itself, infringe the copyright in any of the underlying works from which it was derived. This is important. Building a research corpus usually involves substantial amounts of copying. However, once the corpus has been created, the computational process of querying the database to produce metadata may have no copyright significance. Derived metadata does not infringe copyright because the derived data is not, in any relevant sense, a copy of the underlying work. This means that there should be no copyright issue with exporting derived data to another jurisdiction, even if the copying that was necessary to build the research corpus in the first place would not have been allowed in that jurisdiction. It also means that there shouldn't be any issue with allowing overseas researchers to query a US corpus, so long as the results of those queries are confined to derived metadata.